All right. So I am continuing this. This is part two of this journal video. I am, it's telling me my system has run out of memory and it's wanting me to quit it, but I don't want to quit it. I'm in the middle of this. So this is projected control, stolen power. So learned at the end of the second, but is indulged in on the third. Okay. So let's just go to the first. So courage is learned. And this is weird because the first and the second kind of mold in on each other. If, if the child has the opportunity to learn courage and vulnerability, correct. It's really learned during the first and at the end of the first. No, it's it's not during the first. It's at the end. It's really at the end. Learned at the end of the first. And then with vulnerability, you learn to accept it. So it's learning... Yeah, it's it's learned at the at the first but indulged in the second. And this is where courage and vulnerability kind of mold in on each other. They they go hand in hand. It's courage, courage, courage. Well, it's it's Care, carefree. I would say it starts off as carefree. You're carefree. And then when you, and this is literally like from zero to about, I'm going to say 14 months. I have my, my dearest friend has a 14 month old and she's letting me do behavioral research via observation on her daughter. So based off of that data, I have this zero to nine months carefree. And then she entered, she started courage around nine months and then it's learned. So you have to learn courage, uh, which comes in at the end of the first. Technically it's when you become musical. It's as soon as you become musical, you are looking for music, or you are looking for when your child becomes theater, dance, stage, you're looking for the arts. So the arts is the first clue that it's begun. Look for the arts. Look for the arts. As soon as they start the arts, it's begun. No, you idiotic computer of doom. Okay. And then vulnerability learned at the end of the first, but indulged on the second. Appreciation self-control, power via choice, accountability. Now, self-value, this is learned at the end of sixth, but is indulged in the seventh. And at this time, you become the observer. The observing receptor. Yeah, observation and silence. It's like there's a reset at the first and the, sec the seventh. And then it's reception, transmission. That one took a long time to figure out. That took two rounds plus a bunch of physics to figure out. If you don't know physics, yeah, you must have physics and economics at this point. If you don't, this is not going to, yeah, holy shit. That, that's made it so much easier. I would say math or physics. Reception, transmission, connection. And with this one, it was I started to feel bad for people. I became 
consciously uh, receptive of others. What does that mean, receptive? Look it up. What's receptive mean? Mm -mm. No, that's not at all what I meant. Interesting. Yeah, it was consciously concerned. I became constantly concerned of others. I learned that at the end of the eighth. And it's what I indulged in at the ninth. I wanted to share. I wanted to share. Fairness. Oh, that's, that's the word. I wanted to share. I wanted fairness. I wonder if fairness is how we connect. And then I had emotional fluidity. This is where my words started to not make sense. And then the 12th, I was learning how to integrate emotional freedom with logical navigation to steer my power. So it was the first time I went through it, it was just being courageous enough to feel all of these things. The courage. Courage to discover. And then the second time I went through them. Yeah, you have to fucking master courage before you get into the second. And that's just it. It was a sudden realization of... It was the vulnerability. And so I defended and that is the the eye of eye that is absolutely the eye of eye and then it was and they look different when you think of them in the sense vulnerable carefreeness vulnerable courage vulnerable vulnerability vulnerable appreciation everything was vulnerable that's why it was fucking hell and then after that it became it became, well, that's where I am now, is appreciation. Everything is just appreciated. Go away, you warning that I don't want. And, and it was, everything is just appreciation. Yeah, I've been very appreciated. It's so funny. Valued. And it, it cracks me up that this is when you get This is when you are given. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful concept. And then same thing here. So I can hypothesize that this is going to be about self-control, which is steered, which is steering. So it's learning how to have 
strategy. It's self-control is strategy. And I, I, it's so funny because I didn't even see this before. It's like, oh, it's strategy. It's amazing how when you combine all these different recipes, strategy, is it really self-control? Strategy is self-control. It didn't even occur to me. It's literally planning. Strategy, planning, purpose, and deliberation. These are all things that you don't realize until you see them partnered up with all of these other in all of these other things. And it's just mind blowing. And this is the fourth. This is the all of I. So then the next one, and this is where I can't see. I cannot see at all. So I, I can't see anything past this point. Like this is something I, I'm using mathematics now to, well, if that's the pattern, then I'm going to assume that this is going to be power. Okay, we're going to try this. Is, is this the problem? Is this the problem? Because if this is the problem, that's okay. Oh, I don't want to close that out. Okay. I think that's good now. All right. And this is, this is going to be, yeah, it's power. And you use power for going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to see that self-control is for steering. No, that's for turning down the knob. It's interesting. Yeah, power for going. Yeah, I, I want to say it's momentum. And propel, propulsion, is that the word? Propulsion. So it's moment, the power for momentum, propulsion. That's the word I've been trying to figure out. I'm very excited about that one. And then the sixth time we go through this, the sixth time we go through it, Lizzie, are you cooking, honey? Okay, is the pizza done? Okay. And then the next one will be self-value. Now, now I'm like, my brain is way out there and I'm going, what's that going to look like? What's that going to look like? So it's self-value. It's learning self-value and courage. Self-value is, oh, equal footing. Oh, see, when you look at it in this light, it takes on a completely different meaning. Self-value for equal footing. Self-value. So it's equal footing. It's not self-value you're learning. You're learning equal footing. Oh. Self-control, power, equal footing. which literally prepares you for reception transmission. See, that makes sense now. I cannot yet figure out what reception transmission and fairness, how that connects to emotional logic. I cannot figure that out. I've been trying to figure this out since I experienced it. I have no idea how this connects to this. I cannot see it. I don't understand it. Now watch this. This, by the way, is apprenticeship. This is tradesman, this is master, and this is philosopher. Isn't that fucking cool? I love that. It's one of the favorite, it's, it's, it's the thing I, I, this is just, yeah, this is my life work. I love it so, so much. This is like, this, this is, this is like, Somebody once said to me, I got this a couple times where they're asking me, did you ever study spiral dynamics? Honey, honey, 
I, what I do is spiral dynamics on dopamine steroids and four shots of four cc's of adrenaline. Well, adrenaline, dopamine, and four cc's of testosterone. Like it's fucking crazy what I'm doing. I never studied spiral dynamics. I read his abstract, one abstract, and that was it. And he only had the first eight. He just went, here's eight. And his work actually fucked up a lot of my work because I kept conforming it to Dr. Graves' work. And I, I, I immediately threw out his work on the third ethical perspective and the first one. I'm like, no, no, those are, those are that. And you can see it's courage and it's being carefree. But the carefreeness is, yeah, that's a whole, that's, that is what I refer to. Let's see if I can remember from my chemistry studies or my biology studies. Uh uh, I have to go back into cell division and molecular molecular cell division stuff. So just give me a minute here. It's the five stages of cell divisions, cell division phases, anaphase. Okay, yep. So it's the let me let me. Uh, all right, so this is the telophase. Oh, let me think about this because stage. Okay, so it'll be easier if I do it this way. The tel telophase is the third ethic. That is what's going on at the third ethic, is telophase. The first one is, is it anaphase or propophase? I have to remember anaphase. And then there's the propophase, pro, prophase. And then there is, oh, here it is. It's literally mitosis. Let me go ahead. La, da, 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 da. Oh, images. Oh, there it is. Is that? There we go. Okay, so interphase, early prophase, late prophase, metaphase. Okay, it's metaphase and then anaphase. So it's metaphase. So I want to show you this. This is really fucking awesome. I love this shit. So this is okay. So metaphase starts with three. That's metaphase. And then it goes anaphase and then it goes telophase. And then you have interphase. So watch this. This gets really fucking awesome. Interphase. That happens here at the fourth. Now, it bothered me. So you also have interphase. And then you have early prophase early prophase I just realized I need to tell my friend this and then late prophase and then late prophase there you go all right so here it is all right so this is interphase and then you've got early prophase so you have interphase early prophase low prophase, and then you get into metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. This is really, really important. And then self-control, you get back into interphase. Is that G2 and then G1? Oh, here's, the, let me look at this one for a minute here. Interphase, interphase, early prophase, late prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Okay, so this is, this is what it looks like. Telophase is, is the one that I, it cracks me up the most because a telophase, are you ready for this? It's when it separates and becomes its own division. So what's what this means is people think that cells divide. Cells do not divide, they split. Division is disintegration. Replication is not disintegration. To say something divides, is to say that it is literally disintegrated. Division means disintegrate. But when it splits, that's different. So it's not cell division, not at all. This is where biologists really need to study more linguistics and mathematics. The cell does not divide. If it divided, it means that it would no longer be the summation. What did I say? 
that a greater whole is dependent upon its okay that was in my, my classes that's that's not here so I went into integrated mathematics and in integrated mathematics the law of integrated mathematics is that a greater integrated whole is dependent upon the integration of its components division means you are disintegrating those components so you have a clock the clock is the integrated whole if you take the clock apart you've divided it it's no longer a clock that is not what happens in cell division in cell division it's actually cell splitting which means you have a clock and the clock creates another clock and the clock mirrors plato's point replicates and then splits and now you've got two clocks this is not division this is replication this is why words matter this is not division it's replication and in the replication process this is what's going on with cell division that's not division it's cell replication they have to split and that's when you get plato's point they break off and now you've got two replicas thank you dear you've got two replicas or you have the integrated you know it's the the mother father cell coming together but then they replicate and they split. So it's a splitting. It's not a division. It matters. So when you go through all of this and you look at what's going on with a child, the child is born, the child goes through interphase, early prophase, late prophase. By the way, this is the same process we go through when we learn. When we learn, we are going through interphase. Why do I have a little line? Oh, yes, I remember now. So when we go through this, it's the same thing. Our education, and this is Plato's point in, in education, Plato's point, Plato's point takes place right here. That is Plato's point in the learning process. It's the third ethical stage. So when you do reverse engineering, you are actually taking the student through these stages and you are replicating it and then at this point, the telophase, which is also related to the master level. So the master is when the Plato's point occurs and the master breaks off and becomes its own. That's how you educate. Really, really amazing. So this in biology and this in the 12 ethical stages and this in the learning tree, which is, by the way, also scientific method. So if you look at science, why am I doing it this way? Okay, this is really funny. So this is scientific method. <laughs> the 12 ethical stages is scientific method in reverse. So this, again, it follows this. So you're actually going through scientific method, both here and also here, which is why it follows also the laws of biology. Like I said, all the subjects are the same subject. You're just learning a different point of view of all the subjects. So the question should never be, what subject am I going to study? The question is, what point of view are you going to study the only subject there is? There's only one subject. There is only one subject. The question is, which point of view of that one subject are you going to study? Because it's all the same subject. The subject... The one subject. I should come up with a name for it. I Yeah, life. I call it human propagation, but it's really, it's the same thing over and over again on repeat. Life. The subject of life. That actually is probably, the one subject is life. Do you want to study life from the biologist's point of view? Do you want to study life from the, you know, and, and that's it. It's the same subject. So it really doesn't matter what subject you choose. You're literally studying the same damn thing over and over again from all the different points of views. And once you, and this is what I did. So I figured this out and I studied all the subjects and I went, wow, it's just the same thing. And then I took all the common denominators from all the subjects and I wrote down all the common denominators and that's what I teach. The common denominators of life. Yep, the common denominators of life, of all. The common denominators of all. And then when you learn the common denominators, <laughs> that's education. And yeah, the rest is like, yeah, you're good. You're good. So here's the common denominators of life. 
And it's, it's so fucking awesome. And so that's really what you're learning from me is you are learning the common denominators of life. You pick any fucking subject and it's going to be all these things over and over again on repeat. It's just 12, 12 subjects, 12 topics. It's really fucking awesome. So you've got your carefree, you've got your courage, you've got your vulnerability. Where did we leave off? So it's equal footing. That's where we're at. We're at equal footing. So it's power and then it's equal footing. It's, you know, I'm going to have a bitch card for Mother Nature. Why would you teach us power before you teach us? Interesting. No, 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 I don't do that. So I never actually take phone calls. I don't know why I even have a phone at this point. And so it's really interesting because I'm looking at this going, interesting. So why would she give us power before she gives us equal footing? Why would she do that? That's something about her I don't understand, but she knows best. So haha, <laughs> mother nature knows best. Oh, there you go. That's a whole nother realm of this. Mother knows best. All right. So then you have the power and then there's the self value. So it's equal footing for fairness it would be equal footing for fairness. And then it would be. Yeah, so we're at the seventh. So then it would be reception. It would be learning how to observe and listen. Oh, this is going to be funny. Observe and listen for what? You're learning how to learn. That's when you start to learn how to teach. Right here, you start to learn how to teach here. I'm going to point out to you. That's mastery. This is why I made the decision that you have to be a master before you're allowed how to teach. Because Mother Nature doesn't even let you touch the subject until you become a master. So it's not actually my law. That's Mother Nature's law. And I borrowed it from her because I went, well, isn't that interesting? When she says you're not allowed to teach, you don't even get to unlock this until you become a master. I went, oh, so says Mother Nature. And then here is tradesmen. So we are breaking the law of nature when we allow teachers to teach when they are tradesmen. So says Mother Nature. Because these right here, these are the ethics of teaching. Do you see what we've done? These are the ethics of justice and fairness. These are the ethics of self-love. So the master is the one that becomes, oh, and then this is the philosopher. And the philosopher is, oh, so observe and listening for learning. And you would have to become Wow. Wow. That would be. This is your ninth round. Through the ethics. This would be your ninth round. Through the 12 ethics. Wow. I'm on my third round through the ethics I can't imagine. I'm going to leave it here. That is, that is a lot. You know, one of the things that really blows my mind is there's no... I don't know where partnering is in all of this. I've been looking for it and I just. I don't know. So this is my hypothesis. 
We are not supposed to partner. And I can't figure out which one it is. And if I wouldn't know better, well, this is where I would pull my circle of trust from this. And my circle of trust is here. Let's shrink this down a bit. She all right? Ah. There was discussion on whether or not she needs an asshole chart. She almost got an asshole chart. We give asshole charts to our cats. Oh, I needed to ask. Lizzie, did you put an asshole check mark on Midnight's chart, by the way? For scratching the tapestry like it was his scratching post? All right, because he was really cute, and I went and added a cuteness at, to his chart. And then I, prior to that, I was like, wait a minute. Did he get his his check mark for being an asshole? So thank you. Okay, so we have two cats. They are freaking cute as hell. But one of them is so mischievous that he literally toggles between cuteness, adorable cuteness, and asshole. And he was so much of an asshole one day that we decided to track his assholeness and ratio to his cuteness to determine if he was more cute than he was an asshole. This is what happens when your mother... Is a mathematician. <laughs> so <laughs> we put this chart on the fridge that measures the ratio of cuteness to assholeness from this cat. And it took him two days to stop being an asshole to counter and balance out to be cute. See, this is his, this is his chart, okay? And right now he has six tallies for being an asshole and five six, seven, eight for being cute. Just, just so we have clarity. So this is midnight's asshole anometer. And this is what it's called is midnight's asshole anometer. But then yesterday, now Spriggan doesn't have one because her cuteness is off the fucking charts and she's never an asshole except yesterday. She decided to use my books as a scratching post. My books. And I'm like, do you need an asshole anometer also? My books. My books. And the cat is never an asshole. This cat is a doll of a sweetheart until she found my books. She was doing the stretching thing, and I'm like, these are my books. So we threatened her with the asshole anometer. She has not touched my books since. And so we we track, we track. So this we, we track whether or not the cats are more cute than they are assholes for no other reason than to just determine for curiosity's sake. And yeah, asshole anometer reading, midnight's asshole anometer reading. So this is the circle of trust. And it really started when I started to get into the circuitry at the tradesman level, self-control, the fourth perspective. So, and this is what I noticed, is fourth perspective of eye of eye is when it began. Well, interesting. Well, that means that all of eye is supposed to, well, thus in conclusion, therefore, the all of eye is about partnership. Interesting. Very interesting. I had a dream where I had asked how long I have to wait. And this was the date she gave me, which will literally align with that. If I continue to follow the mathematical trajectory of where I am and how often I shift into the next perspective. Interesting. So... The fourth perspective is here. 
Anna, where are you now? Mathematical pattern, logical deduction. I can use math to figure this out. Well, fuck this class. Give me a minute. Love you. But fuck, just, just fuck the class. I just realized I can just use math to figure this out. So genie bottle, the genie bottle is where I am. Why haven't I figured out I can use math for anything? Why the fuck have I been using math? All right, so the genie bottle is here. Okay, I, I, I can spell. I can use mathematical projection to figure this out. Why the fuck haven't I? All right, so let's just... Come on, come on, come on. What is this thing? All right, I don't know what that is. We're going to go ahead and just delete it because I don't know what the fuck it is. What is going on? This is this is a thing I've never seen before. Okay, so this is the genie bottle in the center. Okay, that's what that is. This is the genie bottle. And so this is the use space. And then you have the intimacy circle. The intimacy circle is where your partner should be. And then you have your BFF or your first level friendships only. And then you have your second level friendship, which is here, second level. And here is the second level. And then, well, to be honest with you, there is nothing outside of this that is more than. Everything outside of this is now, you're outside of the circle of trust, and now you're in the stranger section. So the... Stranger section, this is your third level, and this is not in your circle of trust. So the third level is where you put friends as a way to make sure that the friends are safe. Let's put, let's use that word. So really the circle of friendship starts here. I'm going to put this like red. So anyone outside of the red circle is not your friend. Um, these are, and then after, in, in case you haven't seen it, this is easily one of my favorite tools. I love the circle of trust. So the circle of trust after the third level, that's where coworkers go. So I'm not gonna draw out the other circles, but it goes coworkers. And the reason why I put coworkers here is because a lot of people get confused because they're like, well, where do my coworkers go? Technically, they go right outside of the third, third the circle of trust. And then you have acquaintance, acquaintances. That's where they go. And then outside of acquaintances, you have strangers. So this is the order. So you meet somebody, they're a stranger. If you see them often, they're an acquaintance. And if you work with them, they're coworkers. That doesn't mean they're your friends. And then if you are evaluating them for friendship, they go here. This is not, this is evaluation. Now for me, it takes someone two years to get to this point. Two years to get to this point. And then after they pass the tests at the third level, then they move into the circle of trust. Now my boundaries are actually right here. That is where boundaries are located. And this is another thing that a lot of people do not know is they do not understand. And actually what I do, I don't want the little arrow there. Okay, so what I do for this is I actually have this. And this is where a lot of people don't get this. This is actually what I call a buffer zone. And that way, no one, there you go. So this is where the partner is located is at that intimacy circle. So I was at the fourth level of the eye of eye. That's when I created this. I created the circle of trust at the fourth of the eye of eye because that's when I started to realize that I noticed it. Now, I just got my BFF back and that was in the... I've known her for 17 years. Just to clarify, she didn't just go from stranger on up. She did not graduate. No, I've known this woman for 17 years. So we're talking about, I was in the second of they. I was ready to have her in the second of they. She came back because I was ready for her. The 
because the universe said it was time. I have friends who are here now. And I was in the first of they. I see. I see. The third level. When was that? I was at the first of you. Wow, look at that. It's been too soon. It's been too soon. Under no circumstances should you have a partner. I understand. You should not have a partner. You're only 12 years old. You shouldn't have a partner at the 12. And at this, you're up to 24 years old. You shouldn't have a partner that young. No, you're trying to figure out what your destination is. And you're going through vulnerability. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You're learning how to defend yourself. You shouldn't have a partner. And in the third, you are learning how to control your power. That's it. That's it. Oh, ho. You're learning how to control your power with appreciation. So that when people get close, you I remember I had made a wish. The only way to prevent No, no, you do not get a partner. No one should have a partner until they get through the they of I. So again, it's 24 plus 12 is going to be 36. 36 ethics. And then you can control your power so you won't hurt those you love. You stop hurting those you love after the 36 ethic. You stop hurting those you love. I see. That makes a lot more sense now. All right. So... Too soon. Yeah, I'm at the 27th ethic. I see. So I have 10 ethics to go. Okay. All right. All right. I've got 10 ethics to go. Feels like there's a countdown now. I do believe I just found the madness of Mother Nature. 
It's like, oh, there's, there's the reason to my madness. I know, right? Yeah, there's the reason to her madness. All right. So I would definitely say that no partners, no intimacy before the 36th ethic. Because you don't learn how to control your power until you have completed three rounds of the 12. If you really want to never again hurt anybody, that's the formula. There you go. You have to go through the ethics three times because the first time you go around, you discover yourself. The second time you go around, you defend the self. The third time you go around, you master your control. Well, no, you, you do. You learn how to absolutely. That's what I'm learning because self-control is learned at the end of the third. Wow. I'm getting a whole nother appreciation. Self-control. Wow. See, now I know, and this is the beautiful thing, is when you know what you're supposed to be mastering and working on, you can fucking work on it, right? As opposed to just blindly going through life, which is why this stuff is like, oh, I'm supposed to be doing this shit? Yeah, I know, right? Welcome to the one subject of life. So I'm going to go through with the common denominators, and I'm going to write down all the common denominators, and I have located them in physics. I have located them in economics. I have located them in biology, in psychology, sociology, math is a tool. Logic is a tool. Reading and writing is a tool. I can't figure out plants. Plants and humans are identical. They do the exact same fucking thing. Plants, animals, humans, they're all the same. They do the exact same thing. It's extraordinary. And I bet, I guess they're both biology. Oh, I should put down ontology. Ontology. So physics, economics, biology, psychology, sociology, and ontology all are the same subject. Just with different, no, they're the same subjects. It's one subject. And my son said it, it's life. So it's the study of life. That's it. It's the study of life. That's really, you know, thank you, Daniel. That, that, is, that is spot on. He, it's so well articulate. That's it. It's just the study of life. You, you need to be studying life. Now, math and logic, reading and writing, that is absolutely a tool. Now, problem solving is literally the um, accumulation of math and logic. Reading and writing is a tool. So we need to be learning reading, logic, and math. Now, communication <laughs> is the application. 
Communication is the application. So, and this is where it gets interesting because economics is the application, but economics and physics are identical. So there's learning the study of life, which is the theory. So you'll have to learn the theory of it, but then you'll have to learn how to apply it. And I refer to that as application. So there's theoretical study, and then there's the application. And then there is the technique, which is literally the tools you are going to use to do the job. So the application is the doing. The theory is the why it's done. The tools are the techniques you're going to use to do the doing. <laughs> Everyone say that. To do the doing. <laughs> to do the doing. <laughs> oh, that tickles me pink. To do the doing, you're going to need tools. Tools to do the doing. Or right, everyone say this. Tools to do the doing. That is what tools are for. To do the doing. And the theory is why we use the tools to do the doing. So words. which is, yeah, words, definition. Now that's back to logic again. History is a tool. That is a very useful tool, but it's just a tool. So intuition is one of the core tools. And I'm going to put it down here. Intuition and imagination. Those are your two core tools. However, in order to train those tools, are we all listening? You're going to need, oh, there you go. This is it. So math requires history. So you need to use history applied with math, you have to apply math to history in order to learn how to use math. That's why you do it. You have to use art. You need, so it's logic plus art equals imagination and creativity. You need math and history in order to learn how to use math and problem solving. You need logic and story in order to I know I'm tired. Can't someone else do this? <laughs> Can't anyone else do this? I need to take a long vacation. I'm in the there. I just shifted. That's why I'm tired and emotional. That's what it is. I'm tired and I. Logic and art equals imagination. No, 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 no. This is self-regulation. Self-regulation. Self-regulation is the ability to know when you need to switch down and I need to go over to the first ethic and rest.
All right. I will figure this out. I'm literally building the curriculum for the logic of life, the study and logic of life. I wonder what the Latin word is for life. Life in Latin means Vita. Why? 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 Vitaology. Vitaology. All right, let's do life in Greek. Oh. I don't speak Greek. So I'm not going to be using the Greek word. <laughs> I don't know how to say this. How do I say this? Zoe? Oh, wait, wait. Zoe. Zoe. Zoeology. 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 Or vitology. Oh, vitality. Oh, that's got a whole nother meaning now. Vitology. 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 Let's see if it's been used for anything. Vitology. Well, Pearl Jam, whoever they are, you heard me, has an album. Who's Pearl Jam? Who are these people? It's a rock band. Give me a minute. Oh, 90s. Oh, no, I wouldn't know them yet. Oh, good God. I have no idea who these people are. Punk, rock, grunge? Who are these people? Pearl Jam. Yeah, 90s. Stone Gozard. Eddie Vedder. What songs did they do? Monkey Wrench. That's right. I have no fucking idea who Pearl Jam is. What is this? All right, what are they best known for? Pearl Jam. I don't even think I've heard of them. Do I know any songs by Pearl Jam? Pearl Jam best songs. Oh, hits. That's what they're called. I'm classically trained, okay? <laughs> Brain the size of a planet and I don't know rock music. I don't know any of these songs. I don't know these people. Yeah, I don't no idea who these people are. Okay, so I found a new band. My teacher was from Juilliard. Rock music was banned. So, Vitology. I do believe this is officially the name of what I teach, vitology, like vitals, vitology. And it is the common denominators of all. It's the one subject, vitology, vitology, vitology. That's got a nice ring to it too, vitology. The logic and study of life. So, yes, and at birth, by the way, if you want to study this, you're going to have to study ontology. It absolutely, well, you'd have to study vitology. No, 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 I think you can do, I, I got this now. Oh, look at this, a new subject, and it's so cute. So, vitology, I'm, I'm breaking it down, I'm trying to, so it's the, this is me winding down, by the way. Okay, so it's the science of comprehension, but that's, and I've been calling it human propagation, but it's more than that. It's literally vitology. <sighs> I'm a vitologist. <laughs> I think I like that. I'm a vitologist. Oh, yes, I'm a vitologist. Vitology is my, yeah, there you go. Oh, that, that, that feels like home. Oh, this is where I got a nice cushy chair now. This is where I've been trying to get to. Vitology. So it's human propagation. It is the science of comprehension. 
Oh, oh yeah. No, no, no. So this, this is vitology. I am so happy with this word. Vitologist. The study and logic of life. The logic and study of life. Vitology. A vitologist. A vitologist. Yep. All right. I, I have happiness in me. That's that's I'm going to just sit down now and sleep and process and to appease my daughter. I'm going to say I'm going to go think about life, the universe and everything now. All right. I love you and I will talk to you later. Thank you so much. And may the kindest of words always find you.